So as time moves on, I still believe that the bull run's going to really be overtaken by blockchain and Web3 gaming. And to that end, uh, we've actually taken a look at a lot of different uh, people who have vast knowledge of that, one of those being Yatsu, the founder of Animoca Brands. We also had uh, my friend uh, Crypto Stash, and he talked about the same things. And then recently we had Kagi talk about what could actually happen and why these things could come through as far as Web3. And today, we got my friend, who is Classy Games. Classy, welcome to the show for the very first time. How are y'all doing? I'm really hyped to talk all about Web3 Gaming. It's kind of like, we've been doing this for two years. It's been like the most slept upon thing. We had this huge run and then everything fell out. And now it's just finally kind of activating. And now is probably the best time to talk about Web3 Gaming. So glad to be here. I, you know what? It's a funny thing because it's a, we, when we first started talking about this, this was back in like, you know, I remember 20, 2020, 2021, people were talking about it. Like, it's going to be the big thing, but it really wasn't prime time. And now I see as like these, some of these big games are, are going to be rolled out in 2024. I think this actually is the right time. We just got over our skis a little bit. And then for everybody uh, that's uh, watching this right now, there's a link in the description to, uh, to Classy's uh, YouTube channel. You can check him out. He's got a lot of great stuff, especially, and uh, going heavy into gala. So, Classy, what do you think about all that stuff that we just talked about as far as, like, 2024 moving forward? Okay, okay, okay. So, if we're actually being 100% serious here, all yeah. the Moon Boys will always say that this is the year. It always happens. It's <laughs> like, if 2024 is the year, if it's not 2024, we're heading to 2025. The Binance CEO, CZ, keeps talking about 2025. A bunch of other people are talking about Bitcoin ETFs. We're not talking about any of that. We're just talking about video games here. And this is very important to talk about because we had Axie Infinity. We had, you know, the Sky Mavis just overzealous run that just took over the entire space. And we had Filipinos from all over, Venezuelans all over the world just participating in play to earn economies. Of course, that has died down as crypto as a whole has pretty much calmed. But the thing is, I feel like the way Web3 Gaming is structured now is just we're ignoring the whole play to earn. And we're just now deciding we're just going to make fun games. We're going to make fun games that are utilizing the technology that is already built here to be able to just kind of elevate the experience of the traditional gamer. A big talk that I often have with people in Web3 Gaming is the fact that the freemium model is the ultimate model. Because imagine, mm -hmm. right now we had games back in maybe 2000 that you had to pay $60 for a console. And that yeah. was great. You know, people enjoyed their experience, right? They paid whatever it was for it. They returned it. Maybe they rented it from Best Buy. That's a fun <laughs> little place. I was too young <laughs> to actually go there. Yeah. But, you know, we went through that model. It was great and all. And then we had mobile gaming that came out. We had free-to-play gaming. And when those two things came out, people ridiculed it. They said mobile gaming would never take off, that nobody would actually take any of that seriously. Today, possibly debatably is the largest industry in gaming as we know it because it's so easy to access free-to-play mm. gaming was seen as something that was ridiculous why would anybody watch advertisements why would anybody go ahead and play this game and progress so much slower i want everything just thrown at me but guess what most people nowadays are so much more comfortable with playing a free-to-play versus spending 60 dollars on a game the entry, the barrier is so much more laxed. And I feel like this is kind of the problem with most games and most industries that are kind of emerging where people are just like, there's a lot of friction here. It's hard to get into. It's early. I don't really feel like dealing with it. So most people are a little bit hesitant in regards to just getting into it. Because why would you? Why would the average gamer feel like getting into Web3 when you still have to make a wallet and you, know, you got to figure out your seed phrase and store it over here, but you might lose it. And then you've got to go ahead gone. and yeah, you got to put like a transfer code and a million different things. It's complicated. But it is. I will talk about, you know, multiple solutions that people have done. I will talk about kind of where I see the industry going, but that's kind of like a good base to leave it on that is pretty good you know what then that we could show that will be a perfect one for our second question so this is what i've been asking everybody essentially like this it goes down to the investor the individual and the skeptic and the investor wise i always talk i ask this question why is blockchain gaming going to lead us into the next bull run and what's your top plays the second one is for the individual and the web 2 gamer the one that you were just talking about that you know hates things because it's so complicated why should they play these web 3 games it seems ridiculous and then the last one is the skeptic. If we're going to talk about the great stuff, well, what could derail that? What could we potentially see as like the big speed bump in the road that derails everything? So the first thing's first, why is it going to lead us to the next bull run? Because just like you said, those moon boys, they're pretty convincing. 
every they single very, year. And they like to yell and say, wow, this is insane. You know, <laughs> like all kinds <laughs> of stuff. So for me, in terms of investment potential in the entire space for Web3 gaming, of mm -hmm. course, prices are severely depressed. A lot of models that we had early on in Web3 gaming were really heavy on teams because guess what? Decentralization in crypto gaming kind of doesn't exist right now. A lot of it is centralized. A lot of it is on treasuries that they're using to go ahead and expand their IPs, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of them have raised tens of, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to go ahead and fund their games. So a lot of it is really heavy on the front and not the heaviest in terms of retail. It's usually not the greatest for retail to go ahead and get into. But the good thing is we've kind of gone through this, right? All those distribution unlocks that were really toxic for the average retail investor, we've kind of gone past a lot of it. These token launches have already happened. And a lot of these guys are already depressed. And guess what? They might not have had a product two years ago, but they sure as heck probably have something either live like Gala Games or they have something that's coming very soon. Of course, if they don't, this is a totally different conversation. But for people that are trying to get into actual cryptocurrency investments in the Web3 gaming space, this is kind of been my strategy. And I feel like Web3 gaming is literally my most successful field. I killed it on Axie. I killed it on Peg Axie. I killed it on a bunch of different crypto games. And the reason for it is because I did not invest into the crypto game before it came out. I invested either on a pre-sale, right? That kind of makes sense. But I also invested after the fact, when the first hype cycles came out. And something very important to kind of keep note of is mint burn ratios. Because a lot of these little economies that people keep talking about, play to earn or whatever you want to call it, yeah, they're really good in the beginning and they slowly kind of dissipate. You know, the burn just decreases. There's less volume. The minting goes crazy. Those models, you probably want to be in there in the first couple months at the maximum. If not, you're probably better off having fun. Don't invest into it. Maybe, uh, I don't know, go grab some Taco Bell or something instead, <laughs> instead of getting into Web3 gaming. Those models, that's the old model. That's what most of these cryptocurrencies ended up doing. The newer model is revenue share models where they go ahead, they launch right. whatever token they're doing and they just give some of the revenue either for burns or for example, like Gala is burning a bunch of Gala and turning them into like a Web2 equivalent called Gems for their mobile games. Uh, there's a ton of different ways of going about it. Of course, you, you've also got to worry about like nodes and unlocks that are still, of course, a thing. But overall, as a Web3 investor, I want to get into games that are already out. I want to get into games that I know people are going to get addicted, right? It has to be a good product because ultimately good products will end up having good results for you as an investor. In terms of, you know, someone that is a Web2 gamer. Like myself, I used to literally obsess over StarCraft II. It was Masters in that game when I was like 11. I was challenger in League of Legends, and mm -hmm. I just no life there, right? I had gotten into the scene. I played Arcage and MMORPG. I love it. People will say it's not the best. I don't care what they say. I love Arcage. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> and they, I don't care because people will go like, oh, but there's this other MMO and this other MMO. Sure. Well, there's They'll always never be better. able to agree. They'll never yeah. be able to agree. And that's a big thing here when we're talking about this part. Because Web2 gamers are very hesitant to change things. They're, it's like humans are reliant on hobby. There's a reason that Counter-Strike Global Offensive is the largest FPS game out there, debatably. And they have a gigantic skin market with a bunch of peer-to-peer -peer trading all over the place. They've got this big gambling problem, which I don't even want to get into because it's very extensive. But mm -hmm. people don't care because they enjoy Counter-Strike. They've been playing it since they were 11 years old. And I don't care if the graphics are outdated or if the game isn't the best. I just had fun on it, and it's something I can go ahead and play with my friends. And that ultimately is going to be exactly what gets people into Web3. People are going to go ahead, get into these Web3 games. They're going to go ahead and play them, activate the Web3 equivalent eventually if they feel like it. For example, in CSGO, you can go ahead and sell an item on maybe Valve's Steam Marketplace for, what is it, a 12% fee or something like that. It's pretty high. Yeah. Or maybe you can just do an OTC trade, which is over-the-counter, uh -huh. in crypto for no fees. Wouldn't that just be that much better? But you could do that regularly as well, but you can't really actually cash that out unless you do absurd fees or you go through these shady third-party marketplaces like Boff where you need to get like some Chinese passport. And you know what I mean? It's complicated well, yeah. in Web 2, but people are fine with it because they're already used to it. It's just what they've done already. People were not fine with free-to-play gaming. People were not fine with mobile gaming. But over time, as their friends, as other people began to adopt it, they went ahead and said, okay, why not? Let's give it a try. 
So I think that's what, what's going to inevitably happen in, you know, Web3 gaming, where some of these more Web2S games that are just pretty much Web2 games, like regular games with a mm -hmm. little bit of crypto on them on the side, yeah. maybe NFTs, right? To go ahead and actually own your assets instead of the game provider just banning it all or forcing you to keep it on a platform without any resale value. They're going to go ahead, let you do it. Maybe it's a great game. Maybe you're playing Call of Duty one day. They release, maybe it's not called an NFT collection. Maybe it's just mm -hmm. called... Uh, digital asset like digital asset news right and they decide to go ahead and release that you're probably going to be a lot more willing to trade on it the age of play to earn the age of axie infinity and all that different stuff that's kind of past us and of course a lot of crypto it's really early on and when things are really early on weird things happen and unfortunately for us we had unsustainable models but i don't really know of any web3 games that are you know replicating what axie is doing we kind of learned and we've kind of moved on from there so that's my take on web2 gamers in terms of you know skeptics in general of the industry it's exactly what i said before people are just going to have to eventually kind of come to terms with the fact that it's just the next level we had freemium, right? We have this right now. We have this model where people can play for free. But what if you could play for free and end up making something out of it? Maybe you could sell an NFT and go ahead and roll it over to something else. Or maybe not even. Maybe it's just uh, maybe something like a Lumium where it's like interoperable blockchain technology, which I know it's a big word. I know it's a big word. It's a big but word. all it means, very big word. They have to fix that. But all it means is you can go ahead and use one of your assets from one game and just use it on another one. It's seamless. It's easy. You don't need to do anything complicated. And that's that. A lot of the time, it is a pain to go ahead and do this in Web2 games. And most of the time, they're just greedy. So they're not going to do it in general. I mean, a new Call of Duty comes out. All those skins are gone. So just imagine a world where you could trade that. Sometimes it doesn't need to be that complicated. Sometimes it's just that little bit step up to yeah. make it make sense. So let's say, so real quick, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, class. Yeah. A lot to unpack. So let's just, let's just go in reverse. So Call of Duty, you have a skin, new, a new version comes out. Can you, you just can't bring those over at all? Or I mean, you bought it on that version, you're screwed out. If they decide to shut down the servers, good luck. Cool thing about crypto is some games, for example, mm -hmm. on Gala Last Expedition is going ahead and allowing people to buy servers. So kind of like back in the day when people would run these servers on whatever yeah. they were running them in, sure. uh, you can do them nowadays with nodes. And that's just another way to decentralize everything. And even if the game shuts down, right, the next mm -hmm. battlefield, they decide EA is like, I'm good. I'm not going to do this anymore. It don't matter. The players can go ahead and host servers and you could continue to use whatever assets you had. So it increases the longevity of games. I think it's healthy. Of course, you've got to rationalize the cost of actually running a server. This is true. So that was amazing because you answered all three questions together. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've never had anybody do that. Amazing. So like, that was pretty good. So let me, let me break it down because everybody's, I'm sure everybody's head spinning. So, okay. The next bull run is going to go like this. And the, the reason why is because you talk about the gamers are going to actually get used to it because they're used to this process happening right now. And I'll bring you all the way back. When I was playing games, it was on a Nintendo, right? A, not a Super Nintendo, a Nintendo, original NES. And you would go and buy the console game. And it was like 40 or 50 bucks back then, I might add. And oh after that, God. you could go to like some place and you could sell it, like a GameStop, whatever else. Here's five, 10 bucks, get, get the hell out of here. Great. So that's it. Then the gaming went from that and it went to a subscription model. Remember that? And all the gamers were super pissed off because like, this is ridiculous, whatever else. And now you will never see me do that. And they did it and they kept going. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, where'd this game go? Where'd that game go? Oh, we got rid of it. Well, tough luck. And then that, what you talk about classy is that free to play model came out. And everybody said the same thing you said. This is stupid. Who's going to play these stupid games? Not going to sit through all these ads. It's ridiculous. And guess what? They went through that. And yeah. now we're going through Web3 and NFTs. And they're like, that's stupid. I'm not going to do that. But it really comes down to, you know what it comes down to, which would be the next question, which is you talked about, why the Web2 gamers hate it. And it really comes down to, there was this comment in the last one that I had with Kagi. And this guy said, hey, as a gamer, why would I play these laughable crypto games? No, thanks. You'd rather be buying good gaming stocks than real gamers actually enjoy playing. But it comes down to, do you enjoy these games? And that's why I think that you're so big on Gala, right? Because Gala, you've been talking a lot about this. I'm addicted to these games. It's like, okay, if you're a skeptic of mobile gaming in crypto, uh -huh. I implore, download Champions Arena, play it, and tell me it doesn't feel like a normal mobile game. Tell me it doesn't feel like any other mobile game out there, just with a market and a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. That's it. That's the what? only difference. 
Gotcha. If they download Champions Arena, they will understand that it's just like any other game. You can do it on iOS. You can do it yeah. on Android. It's so accessible. They hit over 50,000 downloads in like seven days. Of course, it's not Web2 metrics, but it's definitely getting there. And that's because they're producing results. When we get good games that people want to play, that is when people will understand. And he's right. Why would you... Uh, you know, play this crypto game when I can invest into NVIDIA or some other gaming stock. Maybe I want to invest into Blizzard. Good reason for it. Maybe you don't want to invest. Why do right. you need to invest? You don't need to invest for Champions Arena and you can still earn minting scrolls to go ahead and mint NFTs and resell them. So maybe you don't need to spend and maybe it's just a step up on that freemium model that everybody's been using up to this day. Perfect. And then be be before we before going to the next piece, uh, the last piece, your top plays. I know you're big in the Gala, so you got to be, I'm guessing, big in the Gala token. But is there anything else that you have your eyes on as far as investing? So, no, I, Classy, you're you're hardcore gamer. You're a real gamer. But what other things are like as far as like the investor side of Classy? Oh, geez. I or, mean, or, or is there anything that you're like, you know what? It's all this. It's tough. It's tough because I'm very NFT centric. Like every time, like spider tanks, for example, I bought like 7,000 worth of spider tanks in a single month and I flipped them a month after. And then I was getting to Champions Arena pretty heavy. I'm really good at flipping. That's all I do. Because I think a lot of it is riding the momentum waves initially, kind of mm -hmm. taking profit on that and then laxing out. Unless you're actually interested in the game, then at that point, just do whatever you want. There are ecosystems out there other than Gala, obviously. Hot take. A lot of people will hate me for this, but I think that the Ronin outright actually has a place in this world. I think they have enough money on their treasury to make it happen. Their games are not very good. They're pretty trash. The Machines Arena needs a lot of work. Let's be honest. I played it and I was raging up the ante because my character kept getting stuck. And that's supposed to be a game that is a flagship title on the Ronin Network. I think it has potential, though. I think Immutable X with their passports has a ton of potential. They've got Gods Unchained. Uh, they've got Wag Me, which I've been talking a lot to. A ton of different games that are awesome. Alluvium, for example, I believe right. is on Immutable X as well. I know Avalanche is building. They've got Shrapnel. Polygon has an entire gaming studio with the head of YouTube gaming on there, which is insane. Like, Ryan White is absolutely killing it. I'm mm -hmm. super bullish on Polygon. There's Myria, which is a little bit more of a skeptic if you're into indie games and you're into a little bit of the smaller market cap side. There's so many different plays in crypto gaming. I mean, this is an industry that is worth tens of billions of dollars, essentially, at this point in like raised capital. I mean, I swear it's so big right now. And it's crazy to think that two years ago, it was like, what is it, like 50x bigger than it is today? It's, it's absurd. It's like, how? How is that that's, even possible? See, that, that's just it. And people just think, oh, we're late. We're late. I'm like, you're not late. Yeah, everybody you know, left. Yeah, everybody, everybody's gone. You're not late. You're actually getting in here on the ground floor, quite honestly. And I, and I, it's hard for yeah. people to get that because they're like, we saw what happened two years ago, and everybody says the same thing: axie, axie, and the play to earn. It's dead, and da da da. So, classy. What you're talking about is it's not dead. It's just there's a new model, and that's a revenue share model. And especially like when you talked about with um, Gala Games. You said that they were, it's you know, PC and then uh, Mac, but there's they're mostly mostly moving towards the mobile yeah. side of things. Is that how all the games are now with Gala, or are they switching back and forth? I mean, that's the ultimatum. I mean, Spider Tanks is probably gonna end up going mobile. All these games should be mobile. Ultimately, PC gamers might not enjoy you know Web3 gaming, but I'm sure a mobile gamer is gonna be a lot more receptive to it. They're not as hardcore. They're a little bit more casual in nature. And they're a lot more, you know, uh, willing to play some game that might be a little bit more pay-to-win than others. I mean, mobile gaming is the most pay-to-win sector that is even conceivable. Like, it's insane how pay-to-win uh, mobile gaming is. So, I mean, some of these play to earn models are doing really well right now on mobile gaming because of that fact. So, I see mobile gaming as, like, the first frontier. We tried PC gaming for a little bit, but then we, we realized that PC gamers are just not really willing to change that quickly, and they like to kind of boycott things for whatever reason. So we'll kind of ignore the PC gamers. We're go. We're just going to go ahead and go to mobile, do our thing, get the players, and then one day we'll be back and we'll be like, oh, do you remember that Battlefield game that shut down? Could you imagine like if you just like owned a server and you were able to just keep running that? Or, or maybe like Call of Duty, new title comes out, League of Legends skins, maybe they make a League 2, which they're not, obviously. Uh, they hate League 2. They just keep updating their game. <laughs> but, like, let's imagine a world where there's a marketplace for skins. I'm sure a ton of people would, you know, pay a ton of money for skins. I own over 
I think, what, like 500 or 600 skins on League. I wish I could sell that. But if I want to sell that, I have to go to some third-party shady marketplace, like player marketplace, and then yeah. just hope either I don't get scammed or I do it right, and then I'm, like, breaking the terms of service. service. You're breaking the terms of service. You're, you're breaking the TOS. For no reason. For no reason. And then you can get banned. Yeah, yeah. literally. So, so you know what? And it's a, it's a funny thing. If we're talking about, you said the PC gamer, which is the hardcore gamer. And I'm a PC gamer, yeah. Right. And of course, you guys are the ones that are the loudest. But in all yes. honesty, if we, if we take a look at it, this person who wrote this comment is probably, maybe or maybe not, a PC gamer. But I will tell you that the majority, and this is why I believe in, in block gaming, Web3 gaming, is that if you, if you take music, filmed, film, and even books, crazy enough, they're still dwarfed by video games, 192 oh, yeah. billion. 100%. And, out of, and, and exactly, and out of this, it's not console games. It's not the box PC games. It's not the browser games. It's mobile games. It's the games that you just talked about that are all through here. They're going to lead us into the next bull run. And I always say like this, I think that these games are the real Trojan horse to get people out of the web two into web three, which are the easier games because they're not so hard to set up. And then also the different places that are actually building these AAA games, it's going to take a lot longer. I know that they've got a, they're like, they're like the foreman. They're like the uh, construction worker. They're like yeah. the, the person that comes in and goes, you know what? By next month, we'll have this whole house built. And you go back next month. What happened? Well, we kind of went a little bit behind, but we'll do it in two months. What the hell happened the first month? So classy. That, 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 that's, that's really We're relatable, down. even on Gala, on every ecosystem on the planet. Not even Web3. Let's just talk about Web2. <laughs> every game just has the, the lazy days, I swear. And uh, for example, I remember there was this game called Spore, which it's funny because we've got Will right over here too now. Uh, he's the creator of Spore and The Sims and all that great stuff. And nice. Spore was a game that when I saw the alpha trailer, it was gruesome. I mean, there were these little creatures that were super cute. And then you would just like rip them apart and it was absolutely gory, all kinds of stuff. But the great. game comes out and it's just the cutest little thing in the world. You've got these little fluffy little Spore creatures. And then anybody, if you were like a Web3 gamer and, and that actually happened in a full release, they'd be like, they just rugged us. This is awful. How <laughs> dare they? Right? Like, right. That's kind of like the expectation that whatever is here better stay like this no matter what. It's not how games really function. I mean, how many mobile games even exist? I, I heard there was like load. a statistic where it was like, what was it? Over 1,500 games launched every single day. Probably more, like way more. Yeah. My, I'm very, you know, generous in this, uh, you know, figure, but like, there's so many games coming out and mm -hmm. mobile gaming is so large. Like you saw right there, PC is nothing compared. Maybe you're looking at this on your computer, but ultimately what gets exposure is what actually matters. The amount of money that somebody dumps into something or invest, that doesn't matter. A lot of people will hate me for this, but I think what's important is that people play the games and they don't expect some sort of investment return immediately or whatever in general. Most people should be playing a game to just have fun. The people that decide to extract should become a minority in every model. There shouldn't right. be models that force you to invest because ultimately you should be playing games for fun. Most people do it. They're not in the mindset of like, I want to make a ton of money off of this. And Web3 Gaming doesn't have to be like that. It could just be like I said earlier, you've got skins that maybe you want to trade with someone else. Maybe you don't want to wait a ton of time. You know, there's so many restrictions in trading in third-party marketplaces with KYC and all these different laws. Yeah. Decentralization makes it so much easier. You can instantaneously send things. It's not like back in the day where Ethereum was the only chain anybody ever used and the gas fees were absurd. I, I mean, I, I used to pay like, what was it? $150 at some point for a transaction, yeah. probably more yeah. for mints. 2021? Oh yeah. Yeah, 100%. And nowadays, I mean, I did a gyre transaction today, which was free. I paid nothing. And there's plenty of blockchains that do that. Uh, for example, mm. if you want to talk about, you know, Polygon, it's like cents. I think it's like a set per transaction. Immutable X, I don't think they even charge you anything, do they? After you bridge it in? Well, it, it, if it's anything, it's uh, minuscule. It's yeah, I don't even thing. notice it, right? And there's plenty of other blockchains at this point that are doing what needs to be done to actually facilitate real crypto transactions in gaming. And that's just not having any gas fees. That's being fast. It took some time to build the infrastructure. I'm not going to lie. But I think we're finally here. I got to tell you. Well, Classy, you've said it all today. And you've said a lot. This is going to be a lot for people to, to digest. And uh, so everybody at home, 
Again, if you want to uh, take a look at, uh, at, at Classy and follow him on YouTube, he's also got a Twitter account, which I think is linked to his YouTube. I will link those in the description. But uh, Classy, that was, that was great. We're going to have to have you on again just to see as things progress where oh, we're actually be in, yeah. in the space. Because the thing that you talked about with Gala and mobile and moving there, I can see how that would be. And then as far as, as, far as like, like rev sharing, how perfect would that be? Especially if, if, if you're it's in a already web being group. done. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So let me ask you this before we go. Yeah. Rev sharing, which projects are, are doing that right now? The game I just talked about champions arena is doing 15% revenue share. And some people will be like, why isn't it 80% or 90%? Ah, Gaming crazy. companies have to keep the lights on. Right. But it's better than 0%. It's that little tiny bit of a step up for people to actually rationalize doing things. And maybe you'll mint an NFT and maybe you'll play arena. Maybe you'll have fun there and, and that's how you kind of uh, play your little Web3 games. It doesn't really matter how you end up doing. This is just one of many different models that are going to end up sprouting up. Just like MMOs are extremely complicated. I mean, have you seen the average MMORPG economy? That thing goes deep. Everybody specializes in a sub-niche of a niche of a niche. And mm -hmm. that kind of goes from there. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of different models. But if you wanted to check out kind of how Web3 Gaming is trying to do it, I think Champions Arena is a wonderful uh, you know, example of this. Is there revenue? Is it from just the sales of like NFTs or those are the transactions or is it a and part of the revenue? Yeah. Is it, is it also a part of the revenue that they get from, cause are they already on the web two iOS and Android? So it's like, they're going to have yeah. ads. That type yeah. Of thing? And, and they've had, you know, a lot of sales. I, I mean, I pay in us dollars. I pay with my Apple pay on my phone. Right. So, so that's it's it. just like any other game, literally. It's except that like, you could take a look at Fortnite. The first game to hit a minute, hit billion dollars. I think it was like six or eight months. Imagine if they had revenue sharing. They go, hey, you know what? We're going to give you 50% oh, yeah. and to bring it back. And then, of course, that's going to bring it in. And then also if we get some kind of like, let's say that we get a, uh, a movie deal or a book deal or merchandise deal or something like that. And you also get 50%. And you can take the, the, the Fortnite crypto what, if they even have one like Maybe that. Maybe it's not yeah. a crypto. Maybe it's just like you own a comic book NFT that you bought. It's kind of like giving retail people, like regular investors, an ability to be a part of something. Like I know Gala, if you want to just get a little bit away from gaming, they have music and you could buy tracks, which give you these little beams that are worth something. So you're just betting on artists growing over time. If you're a fan of an artist or you're a fan of a gaming company, it's very similar in nature. So there's little ways to get in there. But yeah, no, overall, people should just focus on having fun on these games, honestly, because... It's just, it's the same thing as any other game. You just have ownership. You can go ahead and trade. You can use crypto technology. And they'll probably change the name. It's probably not going to call be called crypto or NFTs in the future. They'll come up with some other name because I think the name is really stupid. But is, I mean, we'll see where we end up going, right? It, we'll see where we end up. All right. I will leave it there. That was a great lead off point. So everybody follow Classy on uh, YouTube, also on Twitter. And uh, Classy, again, thanks for coming on. Everybody, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that's it for today. So for me and Classy, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it and see you on the next one.